a number of years ago, I had a grad student for his master's project. He made uh, some molds and uh, compression molds. And uh, so this, uh, we used uh, some shredded plastic, just like you saw earlier today, or anyway, we had some shredded plastic. So we'll get to that part. Uh, anyway, this is uh, the mold for this one. And so it's kind of hard to tell that uh, this was machined with about one degree of taper. So it's got some draft. And so this is set up. Um, uh, so this mold here, and it was matched, uh, lined up. And one of the things we wanted to do is we wanted to have plenty of plastic in here and then this would force it out to the edges. Uh, the one problem we did find with this is uh, when we put this in the compression mold and heat it up, compressed it, uh, this plastic, when it shrunk, it would uh, tend to uh, shrink on this thing right here. Okay, and so we, we needed some ejector pins, uh, but it, it was kind of have, I guess the ejector pins would have to be on this, but it came off that part fine. And you can see we should have surface finished that, or whatever. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, this kind of shrunk on there, but we don't have a good place for an ejector pin. Anyway, it worked pretty well. So we didn't uh, quite have enough plastic, but we put in shredded plastic in here, loaded by hand. But that one looks better. Here's another one where you can see we didn't have enough plastic when we did it, and then it uh, solidified. Uh, so these were done both at the same time, same batch of shredded plastic there. Okay, so this goes there, this goes here. So let's look at the bottom here. We had to have a uh, mold for the bottom. And um, so let's, so this is one of the early ones we did. And you can see we didn't quite have enough plastic there. And uh, let's look at the mold for this. Again, we have a match mold set. So lined up. So I guess we could just put the plastic in here and use that to do it. Again, uh, this is tapered about one degree, I think one or two degrees taper, I don't remember now. We purchased a, uh, an end mill that was tapered uh, to get that. Another thing which you'll notice that um, um, we do have some pins we can push out here to knock it out there, but since that was tapered, that wasn't really the problem. Um, but we do, we didn't use uh, radii at the bottom, and that was part of the reason why they, this would stick a little bit. You can see this polyethylene, it shrinks, and so we didn't have any problem there. Here is another one that did a little bit better. Um, okay, so the problem we had was uh, the part would shrink, it wanted to shrink on uh, this. Okay, so even though we put a draft on this and some tape or two, um, again, we should have radiused uh, these edges or put fillets, well, radius this, and so it'll be fillets right there. We did have, um, this is a two part mold, but one part always stays together. And so we do have some knockout pins, but when this shrinks here, it, it's very hard to get it off. We have found we had to heat uh, the part, the mold up part way uh, to get the plastic to do that. And then we can push uh, these knockout pins uh, to get it to pop out here. Okay, so here we got CJ, our machinist. He's going to show us how to uh, attach a, uh, a, a clip for a clipboard 
to the uh, this so he's got one of the clipboards so he's going to stick it into a jig and um, so I put into the jig there and he will center it and then he'll put the clamp down the clamps so this jig was made by Carlos a previous machinist so that would uh, so that the holes uh, for these uh, clips can be drilled in the right way there and make sure they're centered and so he's gonna show you some of the the tools we've got there um, so he'll get a drill bit so CJ we got over here at the drill press and he's replacing uh, one drill bit for another very tiny one it's roughly an eighth inch in diameter because we're using uh, one eighth inch diameter uh, pop rivets or uh, blind rivets it's called Just that, the height there. So we've got the two uh, things here. We're going to just drill the holes all the way through. So those drill guides make it nice and easy to do this. So uh, the back end of some of these clipboards aren't the same and so we've got a little countersink is going to put in there uh, and it's just basically to make a flat spot for the back of the uh, a flat spot for the uh, back of the rivet there so it doesn't uh, protrude out in order to hold these clamps, so CJ's got a clamp so you can see this shows it right there, that's where it's going to be attached to. But in order to hold it on, he's going to clamp uh, that so we can uh, use the pop rivets and, and clamp that on. So we're going to line it up there, hang it over the edge. So these blind rivets, that's the generic name or pop rivet, you push them in there and then you can push down and squeeze it. And uh, that pulls the center pin up and at some point then it will break off. So here is a pop rivet, there it goes, there's one that looks closer up, so this, the center mandrel it's called, it pulls that up inside there and it squeezes it. So you can see that. So we'll... Oh, in it here. Yeah, that well, the washer on the back side there. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna look in there, we've got that, and so it's gonna hold the washer tight to it. And uh, so that will clamp it down and you can see the net the piece popped in there, or the mantle popped in there, look it off.